Well, hello again, and welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we're going to do a little mini review of this uh, latest acquisition here. That's the Hamtech 2072 handheld oscilloscope and digital multimeter. Also includes a, a signal generator. Um, comes in a nice little case with probes, leads, um, charger, etc. And it's uh, a chunky little um, little beast um, and I've been quite impressed so far so I'll show you what I've found out and uh, you can um, see if you like it or not. This one I got from, from Banggood um, it was £133 so it's not a cheap um, option um, but I'm pleased with my purchase so I hope, uh, hope it will allow you to, to make an informed decision too. OK, so here we are looking at the oscilloscope function of the Hantec 2D72 and thought I'd start off by showing you uh, what it's like at the top end of its, um, of its range. This is uh, roughly a 80 MHz signal coming in from my analogue signal generator and as you can see waveform, yeah, wobbling about a bit but um, frequency measurement there is saying about somewhere between 79 and 80 something like that and that agrees with my bench scope that's giving a, a similar a similar sort of reading the drifting about there is got more to do with the uh, analog signal generator than the uh, than the scope itself so um, certainly capable of uh, giving you a, a reasonable frequency measurement uh, up there although obviously what we need to do now is have a look and see what the actual bandwidth is like I can't use my analog um, signal generator to do that because uh, I don't have a great deal of control over the, the output level. So we'll swap over to a digital um, signal source and uh, have a look uh, what it's capable of there. Okay here we are with the Antec 2D72 now attached to my uh, uh, digital function generator and currently displaying a signal there of 1 MHz which uh, it's measurements telling me that and uh, my bench scope also agrees with that. So I've arranged the output voltage of the digital generator to, to cover about three divisions on the display. Uh, this is my crude method of, of trying to estimate bandwidth. Um, since each division there uh, responds to about 0.33 um, if you like um, about 33% of the total signal. Uh, when we get down to just above two divisions we're roughly at the 3 dB down point. So we're on uh, 200 millivolts per division there. So I'm going to now wind the frequency up in one megahertz steps. So we're now up to 10 megahertz there and I'm just going to get the scope to uh, sort itself out from a time based point of view. Just get it to auto set and it should be displaying the reasonably shaped wave. Again it is showing 10 MHz and there you go we're still at um, still at about three divisions so I'm going to carry on up now. Um, so there we are up at uh, 20 MHz and again still showing a reasonable sine wave it's agreeing from a frequency measurement point of view. So I'm going to carry on to 30 MHz. Okay that's 30 MHz. I'm going to get it to auto acquire again there you can possibly hear the relays clicking away inside the unit as it does its stuff and okay there we have a display and as you can see we've still pretty much got the, the three divisions um, so still uh, it's not started to drop yet which is good so we'll carry on up to 40 megahertz and see what we get there so that's 40 megahertz and it has begun to drop slightly now we will just do an auto set on that again um, and see what we get. Um, frequency measurement is coming up at about 40 megahertz so yeah that's good. It uh, displays wobbling about granted um, but it is nonetheless giving you an accurate frequency measurement and uh, uh, voltage is still uh, similar so it's clearly alright up to 40 megahertz. Um, so I'm going to carry on up to 50 megahertz So there's, there's 50 megahertz, um, you can see it's measuring 50 and uh, display is saying the same. I'm going to try just auto setting that again. Uh, see what we come up with. 
any moment now. Yep, there we go, 50 megahertz displaying you the, the wave and Benchscope completely agrees with those um, with those measurements. Uh, my digital uh, generator unfortunately doesn't go any higher than 50 megahertz so I can't carry on up to the stated bandwidth of 70 but certainly say the, the bandwidth's good up to 50 which actually I'm quite surprised about I wasn't expecting it to be that good um, so yeah pleased with that um, so there's the, the scope function um, I'm going to now just turn off the uh, measurements so that uh, just work my way through the menus to measure there and we're going to turn that off so you can see the display a bit better and in a moment or two that um, bottom function menu will, will clear itself away and you'll be able to see the, the waveform properly so I'm going to just come back down to about 10 megahertz in fact let's go for 5 megahertz I'm going to ask that to just auto set for me at 5 megahertz which it shouldn't have too much trouble doing I wouldn't have thought there we go so there's 5 megahertz on sine wave so now we're going to just look at a couple of different waveforms so here is square wave and you've got um, obviously got some ringing there that's probably got uh, more to do with the way I'm terminating the uh, uh, the line than it has uh, the actual the scope itself um, I suspect yeah that's got to do with the reflections inside the cable so there's your square wave um, and there's a ramp both ways um, triangle sawtooth both ways and we've got some rectification going on here um, so when you get yourself to a display like that uh, it's now possible to hop into the, the trigger menu and we're triggering on the rising edge which is what it's struggling with so if I ask it to trigger on the falling edge straight away it stabilizes the display um, so relatively easy to uh, to sort that um, so uh, there you go that'll just step through to got some half wave rectification there and uh, various random waveforms for you that my signal generator will produce um, so that's the oscilloscope function and to be quite honest um, I think that's all right it's a lot better than I expected there is a second channel I haven't bothered to display it it gives you a green uh, trace uh, one thing that it hasn't got is the ability to run in XY mode so it wouldn't be possible to display lesser JS patterns or to even uh, make it into a, a curve tracer if you've got the relevant circuitry in front of it but considering it's a handheld scope um, I actually think that's that's pretty good really so uh, I'm quite impressed so I did mention earlier that I didn't think it was possible to run the scope in XY mode and in actual fact I was wrong. I've now uh, discovered it is more than possible to run it in XY mode. In fact here it is and if I just bring one of the channels out of phase you can see we can in fact display lesser yes patterns on it. So uh, apologies Antec, I did you a disservice there. Um, so that's another advantage. There we go. OK so here we are looking at the uh, digital multimeter function of the Hantec 2D72 handheld scope and meter and um, on resistance and voltage it pretty much agrees with the other two meters I've got certainly to within a fraction of 1% and um, that's well inside the stated specs uh, and works as expected. It's relatively slow uh, when it comes to actually um, producing a measurement so you just have to be a little bit patient with it um, but on capacitance um, it, it's as the value increases it gets slower and slower so here we've got um, a very small value capacitor and fairly quickly it's telling you straight away it's coming up with about 1.2 nanofarads there um, got a 33 nanofarad here and as you can see, very quickly it's identified that. 
as we start to move up got some electrolytics here so I've got a 2.2 microfarad there and it's saying 2.17 that's good um, move up here to 22 microfarad and you probably start to see what I'm talking about now initially appears as though nothing's happening and it's indeed now picking it up as well 23.7 microfarads so as we move on to uh, bigger ones, this is 47 microfarads and as you saw there initially it gives you a bit of a, a random uh, number usually something in nanofarads before it correctly identifies it at 48 um, well 48.2 uh, microfarads um, its stated range is up to um, is up to 100 microfarads so we've got a hundred microfarad electric electrolytic here so we'll just wait patiently there it tells me it's 1.03 nanofarads for a while and then eventually it announces 97.6 microfarads which is more accurate so I wondered how far it would go beyond that range and it pretty much doesn't go very far beyond that range here's a 220 microfarad and after a while but attached to this one, um, it just gives me a what I assume is an out of range display. Um, eventually, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so it's not able to measure a, a 220. So measurements on capacitance are fine, but it is pretty slow. Um, however, for a hobbyist, that, that's actually perfectly fine. I would say. So that's the digital multimeter function um, and looks good. Okay, now we're looking at the um, signal generator function of the Hantec 2D72 handheld oscilloscope. So you've seen the display um, from the signal generator actually displayed uh, on my Hantec uh, bench scope. It's a little bit easier to see the display. Uh, this is a 1 kilohertz um, square wave and I can uh, step up uh, through the frequency. I can actually just use a, a keyboard to enter the uh, frequency if I wish. So I shall just uh, tell it now to go to, to 10 megahertz and okay that's uh, 1 megahertz. I'll just get the scope to, to reacquire that so it's sort it's triggering out. So there's a 1 megahertz square wave. Um, different types of waves. We've also got uh, ramp, uh, sine, uh, what it calls uh, trapez trapezia and then we've got one two three four arbitrary waveforms which um, I'm presuming you can repro you can program from the uh, computer software which will attach to the USB port on the on the scope I've not tried that back to a square wave again and the square wave output um, is possible to uh, use as a as a probe calibration um, tool for the uh, for the scope itself so let's just um, see the scope displaying its own signals okay and there you can see the the same square wave that you were viewing just now on the bench scope displayed uh, on the handheld scope itself and should you so desire that it does come with a probe you can attach the probe uh, to your channel and then use the square wave signal to enable you to to just uh, set the probe up so that it's uh, compensated properly and I've already done that so I won't bore you with, with filming that but um, yeah uh, alright actually considering what it is and also to bear in mind that um, it, it's battery powered I've had it running off um, the power supply while I've been videoing simply because it, that keeps the display on and you can adjust the amount of time that the display stays on but it's a very um, feels very solid. Uh, there's two fairly chunky batteries in the back. It's got this little little clip to allow it to stand up on the bench. Um, so uh, I'm putting it's got a sort of a rubberized uh, outer case here. So I'm actually uh, quite pleased with it if I'm honest. It um, uh, seems to do okay and I think uh, one or two reviewers as I say have criticized the the number of button presses to get somewhere. Uh, once you've played with it a bit, actually it's not too bad at all and uh, you just have to be a little bit patient when it's measuring the larger um, capacitance values. 
uh, and uh, you'll you'll get a result that well certainly compares with uh, the other means I have in here of um, measuring capacitance. So I guess my um, conclusion is um, actually for the money, yeah, it's good. It's certainly not a professional's instrument, but a, a handheld um, two-channel scope with a signal generator and a digital multimeter built in, you've got almost everything you need there, um, sort of in your hand. Um, and from that perspective, I think it's a very versatile bit of kit. So uh, yeah, I'd certainly recommend it. Okay, well that's it for my little mini review of the Hamtic 2072 uh, digital multimeter, signal generator and oscilloscope, two channel and I uh, hope it's um, been enlightening for you. I'm certainly pleased with my purchase. I'm going to be making good use of this. Certainly part of my plan is to be able to use a scope that doesn't have the outside of the, the BNC sockets connected to ground. One or two of the old radios I'm currently working on uh, the chassis does float a couple of volts above above earth and obviously um, if I connect my oscilloscope probe to the, the chassis I'm certainly on a bench scope I'm going to ground that chassis and I think that's potentially enough to give me a few uh, RCCD uh, tripping issues with the mains which I don't really want I don't really want to happen obviously I haven't got that issue with this one um, it will just simply record uh, what it's seen for me and it doesn't have a obviously have an earthed connection. So um, yeah, that's it. So I hope you've um, enjoyed what you've seen, and it's uh, helped a little bit when you perhaps if you're thinking of um, getting one. Um, if you like the video, please click the thumbs up. That'd be absolutely great. Would be also really good if you could subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping to do lots more videos, and hopefully they'll be informative for you. Um, the whole point of this channel really is that it's a hobbyist channel and it's being done by a hobbyist. This kind of thing probably isn't good enough for a professional but it's more than good enough for somebody who's just starting out and just doing sort of hobby electronics and just tinkering away perhaps in the, the spare room. Um, so um, keep on watching the videos please and uh, consider subscribing and hopefully there'll be something there uh, for you too. See you next time.